and speak to you when I've had a fright. You always seem to make my dark sky blue. I miss the pouring of the coffee, the dinners with you and family, the giggles around the table as we ate. I miss looking through the pictures and talking about my wishes. Oh, what I do for another day. Renisha Washington. <laughs> Pass inside, dribble inside, jumps up to the top of the key, and it goes down. Beautiful shot. Set the tone and get going, and um, the intensity off the ball from the Lions here has been really good. Cool. Washington is just looking for something, but he's got nothing to the left at all. It's all crowded around the right-hand side of this court here. Gets the cut inside the self, and puts it up and drops it down. That was a... Not as good as you, Dale. Alan. Oh, come on. Come on, that's a nice move to the bucket. Nice finish. From Renisha Washington. Williams, a strong finish in. Wasn't called a foul. Up the other end. Here's Washington. That went in. That's good news for everyone. Washington. This is the last shot. You have a last shot. Washington. Drive. Pull up. Score. That's her ammo. Great pull up. That's what she does. And that little hook pass that uh, she just pulled off then is, is beautiful to, uh, to have in your arsenal as Washington. Spins and Being from a small town, it's really hard to see past the small town because sometimes all everything that's holding you to a small town are, are not always good for you. And and I told Renisha, I said it's great to come back to Silsby, but come back to Silsby a success because it's really hard to b become a success in your own hometown. And, and that's what she's done. She, she's come back to Silsby with the credentials to, to, to be a successful athlete and just a great person too. She was, she was a good child and she is a good child. Um, quiet, reserved, um, um, just a good child, sweet child. I was raised in the projects. That's where it started for me. My mom, uh, my siblings, my oldest brother, and my youngest sister, Antoine and Antonisha. I'm not sure if everyone knows what the project is, but it's, it's, it's the lower income of the communities. and. It's, it's not, I wouldn't say it's hardship, but, you know, being thankful that you even have a roof over your head, that's a blessing. But it is rough um, growing up in the projects, um, struggling, you know, seeing your mom struggle. Um, we have that in common, and we know that how hard life can actually be. I'm sure just being a single mom challenges, but i um, but I am also thankful to have my support system, my mother, as well as her husband. He was there. I'm thankful for all the support system that we had, you know, that we had growing up. I say it was good and bad. But for the kids, it was a fun time. I ain't gonna lie. Like, it was fun, you know, growing up with all your family, you know. Um, every time we go outside, we just play, play basketball. I, I used to all be with the boys. I always hang out with my oldest brother, Antoine, and my youngest brother, Jaren. We called the country, so we was kids. We grew up as kids. We 
we grew up outside building tree houses, making our own basketball goals and stuff like that. We had a court that we had that was a cemented court, probably like a 15 by 10 foot, but we will play five on five on there. And my sister was always with us, number boys, thugging it out, giving us the work and everything. Like she always showed up and we knew she had something then and she was special. Like to add that she loved sports. I remember whenever she was young, um, I want to say elementary, and um, um, in PE, um, she loved shoot balls. And all of a sudden, I received, she brought home a certificate. It was from, uh, with the signature of uh, President George Bush. He signed it because she was so awesome in basketball. And I'm like, wow, you know. Matter of fact, I need to try to go home and look for that. Look for that certificate, you know, because he, he, he actually signed it. It was the old junior high play the dribbles for Lady Sparks. So Lizzie, uh, when I was young, was my favorite player. So purple and gold, and she was playing for the Sparks. I was playing for the Lady Sparks. So I was like, yep, I'm going. I'm going to WA. No one didn't really see the talent in me, but I did. <laughs> I didn't care. I knew that I had some kind of talent, and, um, and I just went with it. You know, I didn't give up. I stayed practicing. Um, as a little girl, I was so determined. And I don't know, you know, at that age, back in the day, at, you know, I was this, I wanted it. I, I, I wanted it. That was the crazy thing about it when I look back as a kid that um, I always dreamed to be in the WBA, always dreamed to be a professional basketball player. And, and um, I just, I just never gave up on my dream. And I was a little kid and and that what made me proud to see that, that I didn't give up. personality was such that she wasn't a person that really stood out or, or kept, caught your eye about things like that. It was when we started going through drills and, you know, her handling the basketball and, you know, you can kind of tell, if you've been around it long enough, you can kind of tell somebody that's got some, some potential. That's kind of what it was. And then once we got into our practices, I really, it started to come out. You could see it. And, uh, there, there were times, and uh, there were times she would do some things that, like, really surprised me, but I never let her know that. But the good thing was, she wasn't a show, show person. So, like, she did, just did it, and she went about it, her, her business. You know, I, I'm getting back on defense. Yeah, I scored, but I got to get back on defense. I got to stop my man. It was, she was always like that. And so that's why I was really shocked when she quit. She gave it up. We warming up, and you know, I was like, hey, where are Renisha at? Oh, coach, she, she said she quit. I said, do what? She said she quit. And it was all because she got she was on a failure list. So I, run, I leaves out, and I go catch her the next day in the hallway. Renisha, where was you at yesterday? She didn't really want to talk. She was like, well, I, 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 I quit. I said, no, you didn't. She said, yeah, coach, I quit. I say, no, you didn't. I didn't give you permission to quit. I don't know what you're talking about. So I see you this afternoon. And I left. She didn't show up, but I got a phone call from my mom. Oh, hey. no, I wasn't. I, I was not a sports mom. <laughs> I'm a church mom. <laughs> hey, I heard you was, uh, told my daughter she can't quit. Last time I checked, I was her parent, not you. I'm just listening. I'm just listening to her talk, man. I'm just listening. 
And then finally, I, I just told her, I said, listen, uh, your daughter actually is probably the most skilled and talented kid I got on this club. I said, and I think you're doing a disservice to her by allowing her to quit. She said, you know, coach, that make a lot of sense. I said, yeah. I said, I'll watch out for her. I said, but I tell you this, if you make her do that, I said, she's going to miss two, two games, three games, somewhere around in there. I said, but I promise you this, if you make her have to come to practice and she don't get to play, she'll never fail again. Never. It never happened again. You know, behind closed doors, I'm like, you know what you got to do is, you got to do that, encouraging her that way. But as far as going to the ball games, very, very limited. Yeah. <laughs> Church mom, so. She left Silsby Middle School, went to Silsby High School, and she blossomed. Her freshman year, Raynesha ran in the junior varsity division with a lot of other people. And when she ran, not only did she do well, she won it. And she won by a landslide. That really impressed me because that showed a lot of grit, a lot of heart, a lot of courage. Now she played junior varsity basketball as a freshman, but her 10th grade year, her sophomore year, Rainisha made varsity. As Rainisha became a junior, she not only made varsity again, but she was a starter. And she ended up being her leading scorer that year, physically was not an imposing person. She had decent height, but she was skinny as a rail, and she didn't say very much at all. Uh, she was not really good in front of, of people, except on the basketball court. There were so many times, Renisha was a generous player. Uh, I mean, she could have she could have made every every throw, she could have made three-pointer, she could have shot under the basket, but she would always pass off to her other players. And some of those players weren't quite as fast as Renisha, and there would be times that she'd be going in, look like for a layup, and she'd pass off under the basket, and it would hit the, one of her teammates in the head because they, they, she was so fast, and they weren't expecting it. And uh, she just took the game to a different level. When I first got to Stillsby, um, they were coming off of a rough season the year before, and I was a new guy coming in, and uh, we hadn't really built up the trust with the players yet. Um, Rainisha was was one of those early in the season that wanted to question a lot of the calls that were being made, and, and starting the fourth quarter, put Rainisha and another player uh, another one of our starters on the bench because I told them that since they knew so much about what we ought to be doing, they could sit on the bench and help me. And that kind of turned everything around. Those kids, they, they bought in, they trusted in the system, trusted in the process and what we were trying to do. You could just see the trust in, the, in those kids buying in. Like I said, and Rainisha was one of those. And we continued with that success and did great. Rainisha she expressed her interest in, in, in wanting to be able to move on to the next level and be able to play collegiately. So I had an uncle that was a junior college coach at New Mexico, and he uh, he was interested in Rainisha and, and wanted her to be able to come there. And that was one of her options. And, and then uh, Blinn became an option and uh, Blinn Junior College, and she just, Rainisha decided to go to Blinn high school you expect to be the same superstar that you were but it's not like that college it doesn't matter who you are you have to prove yourself I enjoyed my teammates and uh, my coaching staff uh, it was they worked me hard you know where I come from I come from a 3A, 3A high school and everyone that's with William Junior College was about 4A 5A type of players and I was like oh I need to work harder and harder. So my first semester at Blinn was a roller coaster. I did not play not one game uh, my first semester at Blinn, and that what broke me. But I never decided I just want to go home. I never thought about that, you know. I always said that I'm going to stay, I'm going to fight, I'm going to figure out what the coach wants from me. 
she just never stopped, even when somebody tried to tell her to stop. I can always remember when we got older and uh, she had graduated, went to college, and she had to persevere through, persevere through adversity. He called me a weak bird. And you got you to understand, in the college level, coaches can say what they want to you. Either you can take it or you can go home. I took it, you know, but that would, again, that would make me strong. And once I got the opportunity, I took over. I took over, and that was my season at Blinn Junior College. I can say that I learned a lot from Blinn Junior College. After Blinn uh, didn't work out, Ranisha gave me a call and uh, said that she was going to be transferring to Kingsville, to Texas A&M Kingsville, and so we worked and got all that paperwork figured out and she headed out that way and it was, uh, things didn't work out and there were some transcript issues and, and things like that and so she wasn't able to play when she went there. So. Uh, she took some time off and went to work, and she worked for several years after that. And uh, I didn't really hear anything from Radisha for a while. When I came back home in 2011, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what sport to start. That basketball was my dream. Basketball was everything to me, and. I did not know about work, you know, and and so I had to start working. I always be grateful and appreciative and humble and supportive of my sister because she was working at Waterburger in her twenties. In her twenties. Dream still intact and still be texting. Everybody telling her she needs to quit, quit the dream, quit chasing it, and go get a job. I was just working any job I could find. And, and I remember sitting in Waterburger drive through with my microphone and taking orders, and I look up to the sky through the window. And this was 2012 to 2013. I was like, God, I know you have something bigger for me. I just always look out the window like, God, I know you have something bigger for me. And I just look at the stars and like, God, I don't know what my plans are, but I know you hold my future. 2011 to 2014, it was no basketball for me. I used to train outside. I never gave up. Now, I used to always work. I used to always train, but I didn't have no you know, vision at that time. I knew what I wanted to do, but how? I didn't have no guidance. I didn't have no one to pick me back up, tell me to go here, do this, do that. It was like me was like trying to find a way for myself. I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know. Uh, she gives me a call out of the blue and told me she wanted to still play and wanted to know if there was anything that I could do. And I told her that I'll do anything I could for her and I'd help her any way I could and I'd start getting in touch with people, so. The first thing he said, what do, what do you need? Where do you want to go? It was not about, you think so? You know, you're not in shape. You're not, you, you don't have it anymore. It was nothing like that because everybody I told that I want to go back to school told me what? Give it up. But my Jason Sanders, my coach, he never said nothing like that. He told me, what do you need? She went to Colorado and, and really thrived then. I think that uh, Ranisha matured at that point and understood what it took to be a great basketball player. I had an email that came across my desk and 
I had opened it up, and there was this kid from Texas by the name of Renatia Washington. When she first got on campus here, she just had this enthusiasm about her that she was so charismatic, she was very energetic. She was the type of kid that, you know, she'd come up to my office and we just would talk and talk. And she's the type of kid to where you could really make fun of and then she'd make fun of you back. She just had this, you know, um, energy about her that was very fun. Hey, you get and, it, Ray. Oh, Ray, what the fuck? Ray. You know, then you'd put her on the basketball court and she was like a whole different person. She was uh, very energetic. She was fiery. She was a motivator. She was very enthusiastic. And she had this charisma about her that she wasn't going to get stopped today. You know, she was, she would go right in front of her opponent and say, you're not going to score on me. And she'd just clap her hands. You're not going to score on me. Come on, come after me. They came after her. And it was her alone that would just bring out a great presence in practice. You know, like I said her energy um, would fill the gym. And it was always kind of funny because if her opponent would score on her, you know, they, her opponent would just go right back and say, I scored on you, I scored on you. And then her opponent would be like, now you can't score on me. And so she just had that very um, oh, intensity about her that just would bring out everybody in practice. And she really made us good that year. We ended up going to the national tournament. She was part of that team. And I know for a fact that she really helped us become a really good team that year. And I was, I was just really happy that I got to coach a kid like that, that had that energy, that uh, charisma about her that really helped our team get better. 2016 was the best year, I say, for NJC women's basketball. And Dave Huss and Bobby were the best coaches that picked me up and got me back on my feet and believed in me. Um, you know, off the floor, she was just a great kid. Everybody liked her. She had this, um, just this energy that people just enjoy talking to. Her. You know, she, she'd go up, she'd talk to anybody. She's very outgoing, very energetic. and. Just a fun, loving kid. And you know, I, you know, over the course of the year that she played for us, you know, I found out a little bit about her. Um, took the time to, you know, spend some time to just visit with her and learn about her family and everything and just kind of where she came from. And she is a true success story. And still to this day, um, I use her as a recruiting tool for me because to me, She's the type of kid that um, has endured leaps and bounds of success and continuing success that uh, makes her just um, a great person to talk about and, and to motivate kids uh, for their future. And like I said, she is a success story. And you know, I'm very honored to, um, to have taught her, to have coached her. I, I think that She's got a number of years left to play box basketball. You know, like I said, she puts in the time and effort. You know, you see it all over Facebook. Um, kind of like watching the Raven, the the Eagle. You know, still soaring. And you know, that's like I said, that to me is a great inspiration of the kids that I'm working with that I can use. Like, hey, you know, look at this success story to where she's come from and where she is now. You know, the success that she's had overseas, and, and I'm. I, I'm, I'm greatly just honored and, and just grateful that I had a chance to coach her and teach her and just watch her, even after MJC, watch her evolve into this great person, this, this um, true inspiration that, you know, what, whatever happens in your life, you can still get over those obstacles and, and make something uh, of your career and you know I think she's continued to be a, a success she's gonna have a great career one of the things I used always used to motivate her was she was always a great offensive player but um, I always used to call her soft on defense and it was kind of hers and I's little uh, communication back and forth you know she called me soft and I go well, I call you know I just call her soft and it's like hey you got you're tough you know, it was kind of our nickname for each other. You know, she was softy, I was softy. But um, 
she had she she uh, she was just the type of kid where you could have fun. Um, like I said, she was an enjoy, just a great enjoy to teach, to coach, um, to watch grow up uh, in the classroom, on the classroom, on the court. And like I said, she she's a great person. And you know, like I said, for my for my end, it was just a great honor to coach and teach her, watch her evolve, and I'm going to continue to watch her evolve. And um, I just hope the best in, in her future. Um, I know she's got a great future ahead of her. I hope her that um, she will continue to have a lot of success. And um, like I said, it was a great, great opportunity for, for her to come out here and put her roots here at NJC. And I'll ever be grateful that she chose us over a lot of other good junior colleges. So um, it's an honor. And like I said, it's always been a privilege. And I just, I hope for the best for her. And Hopefully that she can continue to win some national championships overseas, so. And I say NJC was the great school. I have nothing to say bad about it. Thank you for the teachers and thank you for the coaching staff. Thank you for the trainers. Thank you for the whole NJC Northeast, Northeastern Junior College. I just want to say thank you guys for giving me the opportunity. Anyway and she came in as a new recruit. Of course, everybody was trying to test her out and see what she was made of. And, and Ray, all I can say, it, she brought the energy. Uh, man, uh, she was the one clapping it up like, you know, let's go, you can't guard me, you know, you can't hold me, and all this type of stuff. And people hated it. They, they hated it, but the thing is, Ray backed it up. That's kind of, that kind of drew me into getting to know her a little bit more. Um, you know, people always say opposites attract, but I really think that people who will make you better, like those are the people you really want to be around the most. And I just, I like my, I liked who I was when I was around Ray. Um, I'm very much an outgoing, extroverted person, but I did have low self-esteem. I had, especially when it came to my basketball game, like I, naturally strong, naturally talented person, but I was average. That was average for me. And so Ray found a way to break it out of me, push me. We were in the we were both pretty much night owls. Um, so we would be in the in the in the basketball court at the basketball court playing, you know, 12, 12 a.m. just shooting shots and she would always say in, in practice, uh, let's be great. Let's be great. She would say that all the time. No matter what happened, she kinda wanted to, us to have that mindset of forgetting what what mess up we just had in the last play. And she says, let's be great. Every time she was in the in the huddle or anything like that in, 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 the, uh, in practice, it was, let's be great, let's be great. And so locker room, let's be great. We heard it so much. She even made this little wristband. So uh, we do have a picture of the team in the locker room with, with the wristband she brought in that had let's be great on it, you know, so. That was kind of our mindset for that for that season. Ray was, like I said, always that motivator. I remember going across the camp, uh, across the way to go knock on Ray's door. Actually, I didn't knock, I just busted in there and I was like, I got a pretty good idea. We're always pushing each other to be better and not just to be our best, but to go beyond it. That coined the term beyond our best and that became <laughs> something that me and Ray started. Kind of, it was all encompassing of everything we wanted to believe in is, you know, being strong physically, mentally, and spiritually. And we took off with it. And Ray has been there by my side ever since the day that we first met. So I'm thankful for Ray Nisha Washington. <laughs>